Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe and explain displacement reactions between halogens and halide ions. You should then be able to write redox equations for these reactions. In the last video we saw that halogens can act as oxidising agents, and the reactivity of the halogens decreases down group 7. Halogens at the top of group 7 are more powerful oxidising agents than those near the bottom. In this video, we're looking at the displacement reactions of halogens, and for A level, we only need to focus on chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Fluorine is highly reactive and would never be used at A level. In a displacement reaction, we take a halogen and aqueous solution, and we react this with an aqueous solution of a metal halide. I'm showing you here the displacement reaction between the halogen chlorine and sodium bromide. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine, so in this reaction, the chlorine has displaced the bromide ion. We formed bromine and sodium chloride. Now, we need to understand this reaction in terms of redox. Remember that chlorine is a more powerful oxidising agent than bromine. In other words, chlorine has a greater ability to remove an electron than bromine. Looking at the redox equation, at the start, the chlorine atoms have an oxidation number of zero, as chlorine is an element. Each bromide ion has an oxidation number of minus one. In the reaction, each chlorine atom removes one electron from a bromide ion. In other words, the chlorine atoms are oxidising the bromide ions. At the same time, the chlorine atoms are being reduced to chloride ions. At the end, the bromine atoms have an oxidation number of zero, as bromine is an element, and the chloride ions each have an oxidation number of minus one. And if we look at the changes in oxidation number, we can see that they balance. Two chlorines have each changed from zero to minus one, and two bromines have each changed from minus one to zero. Now this reaction takes place because chlorine is a more powerful oxidising agent than bromine. We can see a similar reaction between chlorine and sodium iodide. Again, the chlorine has acted as an oxidising agent, oxidising the iodide ions to iodine. And again, this is because chlorine is a more powerful oxidising agent than iodine. Bromine is also a more powerful oxidising agent than iodine. So we can see a displacement reaction between bromine and sodium iodide, which I'm showing you here. Now you'll notice that I haven't included the metal ion in the redox equations. That's because the metal ion is a spectator ion. In other words, it does not take part in the redox reaction. I've used sodium halides in the examples, but any other group 1 metal halide would apply. OK, now when we carry out a displacement reaction, we produce a halogen. And halogens are coloured elements. So that means that a displacement reaction will produce a colour change. However, there is a problem with this. In aqueous solution, both bromine and iodine can appear orange-brown. Now to solve this, we add a non-polar organic solvent, for example cyclohexane. Cyclohexane forms an upper layer and does not take part in the reaction. However, the halogens formed dissolve in the cyclohexane, allowing us to see the colours of the halogens more clearly. In organic solvents, bromine appears orange and iodine appears violet. Looking at the reaction between chlorine and sodium bromide solution, at the start, the chlorine solution is a pale green colour. The reaction forms bromine, which is orange. When we add cyclohexane, the bromine dissolves in the upper layer, which turns orange. If we react chlorine with sodium iodide, then we form iodine. In aqueous solution, iodine appears brown. However, in the upper cyclohexane layer, the iodine appears violet. Reacting bromine with sodium iodide again forms iodine. And again, this appears brown in aqueous solution, but violet in the cyclohexane. In the next video, we look at how halogens can undergo disproportionation.